So, I saw you one visit. Yeah. You came in with a walking stick. I did. And you had some back pain. Yes. Actually, a lot of back pain. Oh. We found something in your neck. Yes. What happened? Once you adjusted my neck, I was able to walk again without a cane. I could sit up straight. It's been how many days? It's just not even 24 hours. Not even 24 hours. And yeah. you've been dealing with this for how long again? This happened um, when I slipped and fell December of 2019, January the 12th, 20, okay. 2020. Correct. Yes. Okay, that sounds right. Yes. So uh, we're now in November. Yes. We're getting close to Thanksgiving. Yes. <laughs> okay, so hopefully now you can enjoy the Thanksgiving. I will. And your case is uh, unique. And why it's unique, her case is, um, she had a third cervical, and we talk about anything can cause anything, yeah. right? Where, and it was one of the sayings in Dr. Gonstead's uh, work, find it, accept it, fix it, leave it alone. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean, find it? You have to be able to find the nerve pressure that's causing the patient's disease. Yeah. But then we have to accept it. And that was the big thing, because I was actually, it, it tripped me out a little bit. I'm sitting here trying to figure it out. And while it even looks bad on the x-ray, your fifth lumbar disc, yeah. when we were doing the motion, mm -hmm. it wasn't consistent with the film. And right. this is a big question. When you have an x-ray and, and the patient, do you go with the x-ray finding or the patient finding? And Dr. Gonsad used to always say, always do what the patient needs mm -hmm. and always go with the patient, right? Yes. And that was the big thing with you that the third cervical was causing some cord pressure. Mm -hmm. And the cord pressure, let me explain it. Let me show you on a model because I really want you to understand because I'm sure your family's going, how the heck did he adjust your neck? <laughs> I mean, look, there are a lot of upper cervical guys out there doing this type of work, mm -hmm. okay? In this scenario though, it looked like the low back, and we still have to work on the low back, right. but it didn't start there. Okay. So I want you to do this. So this is the upper cervical. This is the occiput, C1, C2, C3. This is all part of the upper cervical mechanism. Okay, okay now here's what I want you to do. I want you to put two, three fingers in there. So they're nice and snug. Yes. Now what happens if we get misalignment of these bones in the upper, it. it's pushing against what? The fingers, and your fingers represent the spinal cord, yes. And you have thousands and thousands of nerve tracts going down there. So potentially, it can cause it. Okay. Is it always? No. It's whatever it is for that individual mm -hmm. in that case. Okay? okay? So that's kind of the, the logic right. behind how does this fix that. And if we go deeper, and I'm going to be teaching more of this in my classes next year, when we do cross sections of the spinal cord, there are parts of the spinal cord that go to the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. So people can have mid-back pain, low back pain, shoulder pain, all of this, and it can all be coming from that upper cervical. Okay? All right. Thank you. Anything you want to share? So you said uh, you did some walking. Yes, I woke up this morning with walking for the first time since March. Okay. And I did about uh, 20 minutes, and okay. I felt good. I was nervous, but I felt good. So it wasn't pain, it was no nervous. Pain, just nervous, because I was afraid if I get to the corner, I have to call someone to come pick me up, because usually my body just collapsed. You know, not, it just felt real heavy. Like okay. I can't move, and I had no problem. Okay, can I see you walk a couple of times? Of course. Stand over here, please, so I can tuck. All right. <laughs> Stand over. She's ready to go. She is ready to go. So yesterday, and we're not using the walking stick now, no, right? Walking stick. Okay, go ahead and walk that off for me. Her dimples are actually moving. How are your feet when you're walking? Fine. Good. Keep going. Excellent. Shall we have a seat and get started? Yes. And we're going to start at the base of the neck. <laughs> it's just a tiny little one today. Four or five pointer. C3. Now we did get some other pressure readings. We do still have some pressure in that mid-back. Ready for spicy. You ready for the spicy? <laughs> yes. 
Some chicken tikka masala. <laughs> that Jamaican jerk chicken is pretty spicy. And you can see there is pressure down here. Mm -hmm. You know, there's about 10 points down in the sacrum. Mm -hmm. And there's about five points in the mid back. Mm -hmm. And there's just a little bit under five points on the third cervical. Scoot forward, ma'am. Feet together. Open and close the knees. Open and close. Right side only. That's your left, but that's okay. <laughs> Do the right side only. Good. Left side only. That's pretty darn good today. Yeah. Nice. Scoot back for me, please. Nice and easy there. That's the sacrum, ma'am. Okay. Tender at all down here? A little tender little tender. This so one more right. tender at the top. Let's do that again. Sacrum or L5? L5. L4? L4. L3. Not L3. L4. Yes. L5. Yes. Now, if we have two bad joints that hurt L4 and L5 or T5 and T6 or wherever it is, we always want to do the lower one. The right? The foundation. We don't ever want to adjust a bad joint over another bad joint. Right. Okay, so we have L5. Head down, please. Round your back. Relax the shoulders. Good. So as we're statically palpating, we can see the swelling starts right there around the bra line, and then it goes right, goes right into this area. But it actually continues down a little bit, all the way down into the low back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, twelve is not part of what we see on the x-ray, but we said, do we go with the patient or the x-ray? What we're going to do, we're going to do the third cervical again. Mm -hmm. We're going to have you walk. We're going to recheck everything after that again. Okay. Okay, then we'll decide what we're going to do. Okay. Thing with your third cervical. It wasn't a big crack, was it? No. And it's kind of something we've been talking about uh, in terms of what is the adjustment and versus what is this cracking sound you know this big phenomenon going all over the internet right, and everything right. and people love to hear that sound exactly. is that sound the fix right. no it's a byproduct of whatever the procedure is and that sound is gas being released from the joint okay. the higher the pitch of those sounds you know like i'm going to do something i'm not adjusting but people think <laughs> That's yeah. an adjustment. Right. That's just popping ligaments. Okay. It's not setting the vertebrae back where home where it needs to be. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, it's really important. And the true adjustment, as was described to me many, many, many years ago, I saw it once as a student by Dr. Doug Cox from the Gonstead Seminar. And it was an L4 knee chest, and it just went, boom. Yeah. And I'm like, what was that? That was the adjustment. Okay, so it wasn't this big crack. No. Now, we may get the crack, mm -hmm. but the crack isn't the actual adjustment. It's just ligaments. And again, higher the pitch, the crackly sound, mm -hmm. that's not what we're looking for. Right. We're looking for those deep clonks. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm going to turn all you crack addicts into <laughs> clonk addicts. <laughs> Scoop forward, ma'am. we got to have a little fun, right? right? Sit back for me, please. Uh, all the way back, dear. Good. Head down. And let's just palpate. C2, C3. Okay. I'm just going to go to the x-ray. All right. Let's set C3. We set it as a PR yesterday. The other thing about C3, it is actually the hardest bone in the body to adjust. And the reason why, I do want to talk about this too. Oh, C3, this is the cervical spine. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And if you look at C3, this is C1, C2, C3. It has the smallest spinous. These are bifid yeah. spinuses. They split into two. Yeah. Down in the lower cervical rest of the spine, it's one. Yeah. These are bifid here. And bifid meaning there's two pieces. Yeah. The third cervical is actually the tiniest. Yeah. And it's really the hardest to get to specifically. Yeah. It's very easy to crack and manipulate, though. Okay? I just wanted to mention that. That's all. Okay, I'm ready. Right hand up. That's your left. I threw that all the time. <laughs> Sorry. And down. All right. So the way we want to get to it, C2, C3, I'll teach more of it in class next year. Let's get that C3. And we just want to get right underneath it. You're going to give it to me, ma'am? Right here down. And we just want to lift up, okay? That's a little bit. A little bit more. That's it. Gotcha. Yeah. Still, you see yeah. hollower sounds, right? Yeah. Nice. All right. Stand up and let's walk that off, please. That's pretty cool. Even yeah. smoother today. Keep going. Yeah. All right. Let's have a seat and let's continue. Starting at the base of the neck, C3 is clear. And what did that do to the rest of the body? So as I mentioned, I was the patient with C3, right? Mm -hmm. And after that, I had about 50, 60 cases. And the guy who taught me that is Dr. Stephen Rindle, Mount Vernon, Washington. He's Gandalf. So, what happened? It's clearing up, right? Mm -hmm. Devin? Mm -hmm. Clearing up. And... It's lower down now. So, we're still not... I'm still not too excited about going deep on this low back yet. It still needs to heal from this third cervical. Okay, ma'am? Okay. I am going to do just a tiny bit of it. This cleared up. I'm not doing the mid-back either. But just like the other visit, I'm going to use the drop board just to get it moving forward, okay? All right. All right. And it's not to say we got the other st stuff to work on, okay? We really do. Mm -hmm. But it's the timing. It's not ready. Yeah. Raise your pelvis a little bit. There you go. And down. And we're just going to use the drop mechanism. I'll be on the sacrum. Just a little bit. Oy. That's it. Wow, okay. There you go. So why does a person drive over, what, 100 miles? Yes. Just to get their neck karate chopped. <laughs> Squeeze my hand, please. Nice. I like it. Good. Elbow. Squeeze. Elbow. Looney. Let's continue. Walk twice and then we're going to rescope you. And if you want to share kind of what's going on in the body as you're walking. Everything just feels nice. Normal. Okay. You know, it feels good to stand up straight, not walk with a cane. All right. Let's come back over here, please. And let's run the meter one more time and see what happens. All right. Miracle. Well, as I've said previously, I expect miracles, man. Me too. The day you stop expecting miracles, I don't know. I believe in miracles. Yes, ma'am. That's all clear. I got a little flutter, but that's not, I don't want to worry about that right now. Okay, let's feel back slowly towards me. Sacrum. Try to keep your head straight now. There. Back towards me. Oy, nice. That's your five. Oh. That's your five. Wow. I didn't touch five. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Sacrum, it's clear. Okay. Can I continue? Yes. Here's. Not a shoulder. Nice. And shoulder. Down, elbow. There you go. Awesome. And last thing I want to do, go on your back, please. AS talus, medial tilt. Raise your left leg, please. AS talus, medial tilt. There you go. Awesome. Sit up for me, please. And let's do a little buff on the back. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Any questions? You are a miracle worker. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. You take care. Thank you.